Hello everybody! Today we are going to be learning how to draw an ice wing from the Wings of Fire series with me, Biohazardia, featuring our favorite grumpy Prince Winter. I've gotten some requests to do tutorials on how to draw Wings of Fire dragons, and I decided to start with the ice wings because, first of all, I just love those icy boys, and also because I think that ice wings are some of the more difficult of the Pyrian dragons to draw. So without further ado, let's get started. So to start with, I always begin with drawing a circle to map out where the dragon's face is going to be. It just helps in general with knowing where exactly everything is going to be. Uh, from there, I just immediately start drawing out a curved line for the snout. Uh, making it taper off with a slight curve. And then I usually like to do a jagged mouth. Um, Winter is not a very friendly fellow, so we're going to give him a scowl here. Uh, we're going to put out the jaw and a nice straight line back here. And then ice wings have a slight spike on their cheek. So I'm going to deal to detail that in right here. And now something that I do in a lot of my drawings is I might notice, hey, you know, the snout here is a little bit too long. So I go over to my transform tool and I can shorten the snout slightly just to make things a little bit more accurate. Um, next, I'm going to come upward and I'm going to move the head slightly to the side and define the neck. So with the neck you usually can do, you can start slightly along the bottom jaw because the neck actually will have a flap of skin that will usually extend to attach to the bottom jaw. So you can start there and draw a general S shape to get the shape of the neck. Now I'm probably gonna have to make them a bit smaller um, to fit in the horns. So again, the sort of transforming process is very, very common and you, shouldn't, you definitely should not be afraid to alter your drawing with transform tool as you go along. So now that I have the general shape of the face, which is actually pretty generic, you could do it for any Wings of Fire Dragon, I'm going to add in where I think the eyes are. So the eyes are going to be about where the end of the mouth is, uh, unless you're drawing sort of like a roaring or snarling dragon. So if you need a guideline, you can kind of draw a line in here. Um, I don't usually do that, but if it helps you, you can do that. And then you can kind of draw two curved lines for the eyes, or essentially make like an almond or diamond shape for the eyes. Ice wings kind of have a wrinkle here, so you can draw that in. Um, and then they also have a kind of armored ridge above their eyes, so we're going to draw that in as well. And uh, it's also noted they have a diamond-shaped snout that looks kind of elegant. So we can draw the flared nostrils. That's a little too flared. Here, and then the ridge here. Uh, and then I like to do, honestly, a lot of my outlining on the sketch, so I will also outline the shape of the scales and the horns here as well. Uh, so we have, here's where the horns are going to be, we're going to make two, oh, that's a bit thin, we're going to make two sort of curved triangular shapes for the horns, and remember this is just your sketch so everything doesn't have to be perfect, and that's the beauty of making a good sketch, because then later with the line art we can just go over it very quickly. Um, I'm going to start with a couple spines here and draw in the second pair of horns. Now these horns are a little bit too big for winter, so I'm going to shorten them down a bit, just a tad. All right, so we can go in ahead and draw the line to define where his belly is going to be. Um, as for the ears, uh, we can draw in essentially a sort of another almond shape that's like more long, and then we've got to get the curve of the inside of the ear. Uh, now for, I think, what are the hardest parts of the ice wings, which are the scales. So in terms of the scales, I try to sort of get a soft, almost fur-like texture for the ridge of spines behind their head. And for those, I would say, um, don't worry about it too much in the sketch because you're going to find them more in your line art. So here I kind of just draw just like sort of a spray of tri curved triangular shapes here for the rough of spikes behind his neck. And then of course we have the spines that go down his... Uh, the back of his neck that aren't just part of the roof. And then we have his actual uh, scales themselves. Now, ice wings have four lines of scales, but this can actually look super cluttered. Um, so typically I actually draw three, but for the sake of the tutorial, we're gonna be correct and draw four. Now, one trick that I found that's really nice into helping to find where to put your scales is you draw a line 
for the scales that you want to draw to help sort of correlate the points to each other. And this you'll kind of see what I mean when I start drawing them more clearly. So I'll draw one line here, one line here, one line here, and then the fourth row will be the back. So what I'm gonna do is with this first line of scales, uh, the first line is kind of wide, so I can kind of make wide scales and see how the points are all lining up with the uh, the line that I've drawn. That sort of helps you give you a guideline as to how to draw the scales. So with each of these, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw little triangles down his neck, and I'm going to keep them in line with that the line that I drew. And it's very helpful because um, you don't really have to guess as to where the scales are going to be placed, and that way it also keeps the scales looking more cohesive. So perfect, now we've got our sketch done and we can move on to the line art. Now, honestly, with the line art, all you have to do is just follow your sketch, essentially. And things get a little bit difficult for the rough, so I'll speed this up and leave the rough to the end to explain it. But for the rest of it, it's all just following the sketch that you've already made. So now we've gotten to the rough of spines at the back, and this is actually definitely, in my opinion, the most difficult part, as I mentioned. Um, so what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to get our sketch layer opacity down to low. Um, and you'll notice that another thing that I did along the way is I kind of added a few extra details, like I thickened the line uh, where the mouth is uh, at, the, at the very end um, to show essentially uh, that to show the scowl, I put a little bit more detail into the eyes and to the ridge of, uh, to the horny ridge above the ice wing's head, just to kind of give some more definition. Um, you can do these in the sketch, or you can do them uh, while you're drawing. It's not a big deal either way. Another detail that I'm adding uh, when I'm doing the line art is the series of spines uh, leading up to the back spines, essentially. So anyway, now that we are at the rough of spines here. Um, Essentially, you want to start tracing out the pattern, the general pattern that you made uh, during your sketch. So, but you want to keep the spines kind of like light and almost, uh, it's hard to say, like a, with like sort of a bouncy feel, um, because these spines here aren't exactly, like they're not very fixed in place the way that the two horns are. So... I think it was almost like a hedgehog, almost. Like, ice wings have like kind of like hedgehog spines behind them. I know it's kind of silly, but it helps me think about the structure um, and how I draw the spines. So here we have a case of where, so th this ends up happening a lot when you draw spines. You have a case of where it kind of looks awkward right here, um, where there's probably going to be another spine coming out right here, but I didn't end up drawing it that way in the sketch. Uh, so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to erase it erase this and I'm going to have to draw in another spine and a good way to figure out if your spines look off or not is to uh, look at the official wings of fire artwork for the ice wings and see what they look like um, another trick that I do for my spines is that I add sort of like a line right here down near the lower three-fourths of the, the horn and it just kind of gives the horn a feeling of thickness and depth essentially I would only do that with larger horns, um, but you can do that uh, with as many of the horns as you want if you feel like, but uh, it's generally a good idea not to put too much detail on every little horn or else the viewer is going to get overwhelmed with details and they're not going to be able to kind of see the whole picture.
And now that we've drawn our spines, we can start finishing up our scales. Um, and then while I'm doing my line art, I usually like to take the time to draw in my signature. So I'll go ahead and put a little biohazard symbol in. Wonderful. Alright, so now it's the big time. We take away our sketch layer and see how it looks. He looks good. Uh, so now I'm going to go on to the coloring process. And one really nice thing about ice wings is that they're white and usually we're drawing on a white background. So in this case, uh, what we would do is I would say you can, if you're going to draw in a transparent picture and you want this to be a transparent drawing or you want to have like a dark background, I would suggest putting the background down first. So if you're going to have, for example, a nighttime dark blue background, I put down the dark blue background and color your ice wing in white. Um, this is so that you know where um, you're, uh, if you're coloring in white, you may have experienced the white sticking out at moments. Um, so for an example, if I have my line art here, I can, if I use the selection tool, uh, the magic wand tool, I can select the general outside. I know there's bleed throughs, there always are. Then I can come along, invert the selection, and then color him in very pale blue, pale silver, or white essentially. When I do that, um, I can notice that there's little bits of white right here uh, that are coming out of our drawing, essentially. And this is why you want to do your coloring on the background color that your background is going to be, not a white canvas. Um, because when you eventually start drawing your background, you're going to have to go back and clean up these little spots in your drawing uh, where the white is bleeding out, essentially. So. Um, in this case, uh, I'm just going to draw on a white canvas, so this isn't necessarily needed, but um, if you are drawing with background, just keep this in mind. So I'm going to turn off those layers. Uh, something else that you can do that really, really helps make your drawing more believable, essentially, is... I'm going to fix up this little spot that I see. Um, is to color your line art. So do that, what you're going to want to do is, you can do this on most programs. Uh, sometimes in like Procreate it's called alpha locking, but here it's called preserve opacity, which means it locks all the transparent pixels so that when you want to color your line art, uh, let's suppose I want to color it dark blue, um, I can take a huge brush, set it to maximum opacity, and just color over the whole thing. And this will cause everything our drawing to become blue, and that will make the whole drawing look a bit more believable. Uh, the eyes I would keep dark if you can, just because uh, the eyes usually need a lot of definition. So I'd keep that closer to black if possible. So now we're ready to start our color. So I'd say winter is a pale blue color, about so. And I would like to use watercolor tools to color all the dragons, just because I like that style coloring. But you can use uh, whatever coloring brush works best for you, airbrush, um, pen. Uh, acrylic brushes, whatever you prefer. So in terms of ice wings, they tend to have darker uh, backs, darker spines, and paler bellies. And that's true with winter. So I'm going to start by coloring his back. Now, something that a lot of people do is they just color all the scales, the blue color, and they'll leave the belly white. And this is actually uh, not very realistic. If you look at Joy Ang's art, there's sort of like a gradient. Um, between the blue and the white. It's not all one color. Uh, so I'm going to try to stay true to that. So I'm going to keep the belly white uh, for the most part, but I'm going to start sort of color in the bright blue gradient. And then closer to the spine, I'm going to make it even darker blue. And I'm going to select even darker blue for this part of the spine. Well, that's a little too dark perhaps. So this will do. Uh, you can use any sort of blending tool to sort of blend these together. Um, and now we have a pretty good spine, um, so we can start coloring his face in the same manner. So in this case, uh, I think that it's best to color the spine, the ears, 
uh, etc. a blue color. And then for the parts you want to accentuate, like the top of his head, you can color it in that darker blue. And again, of course, this depends on your ice wing design. It's just good to keep in mind that ice wings have brighter sort of um, almost pastel -y colors. Uh, winter in Winter Turning, Joy Ang colored him with a very kind of almost like icy uh, sharp blue. Um, but you can interpret any of your ice wings as you want. Um, finally, for the spines, uh, if they, your spines are different colors, so let's say we want to give them like grayish silver spines, we can go in and do that. Um, I'll put his spines on different layers. If I have any problems with them, then I can uh, delete the layer without deleting my other coloring. So I'm going to go ahead and fill these in. on the inside of his ear. Actually, inside his ear, I think has like a pinkish tone. So I'm going to select a very kind of rosy pink. Do the inside of his ear to that. As you can see, I kind of colored outside of the lines in some of these cases, so I'm going to just clean up my work a little bit. Um, and now we have uh, the colored ice wing. So finally, I'm going to do his eyes. Um, personally, I like to draw winter with a dark slara and a bright blue eye, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, so I have dark, darker slara color. Um, I'm going to shade that to be dark blue. And then for his eye color, I prefer a bright blue. So I'm going to do that. Um, have to give him a pupil. I personally like circular pupils because the book says that the dragons have human-like, or the humans have dragon-like eyes, which means that the dragon eyes in Wings of Fire are similar to human eyes. So here we have, now this looks kind of scary, uh, with his pupils so far, but the way to make it look more realistic is to shade your eye. So you're going to cover the top of the eye with a shade uh, that can be the same shade as the pupil. And then you're going to want to brighten the iris. So I'm going to pick a really bright color and uh, I can take a luminosity for this. Uh, which means that the layer is going to be extremely bright. So when I paint on anything, you can see that my color here is a bright blue, but when I'm painting on Winter's face, it turns out really bright. That's because the, color, the layer is called luminosity, so it really brightens up whatever it's painting on. And I can kind of brighten up his eye, basically. Like so. And at the end, give him a little white sparkle. All right, so now we have Winter here. And uh, normally I'll stop the stream here because uh, I'm going to go into shading in another video, but here I just want to discuss something very important with ice wings. And that is um, how shiny they are. So ice wings are always described to be very, very shiny in the Wings of Fire books. Uh, so when you're coloring them, you want to make sure that you always do highlights and give them some shine to their scales. And this can be done by kind of taking a soft brush that's not at 100% opacity. Uh, you can set it on luminosity layer I'll show for the purpose of discussion here, um, but you can use normal layer if luminosity is not an option for you. Um, on Photoshop, you can use color dodge or linear dodge, I think they're called. Uh, and those are also, they act very, very similar to luminosity. It's just that side doesn't have those options here. So with ice wings, um, you have to keep in mind they're really sparkly, they're really shiny. And to get that across, you're going to give little white shines to parts of their horns and their scales to just show how sparkly they are. So, like vampires. So, um, think of areas that you think would stand out and shine. Um, areas essentially that would pop, that you want to have pop out of the picture. So, I want to accentuate Winter's cute cheeks. So, I'm going to give him some shine on his cheeks here. Um, I think his ears would be particularly shiny. So, I'm going to have them shine here. I, I want his nose to be shiny and the area around his eyes to be shiny. So, I'm going to give him some shines here. Um, and along his nose. And again, if you don't want to use the sort of watercolor style, you can do it with the airbrush as well. So if I didn't want to use the kind of watercolor style, I could do, well, that's a little too much. So you want to lower your density for if you're using luminosity layer, because it's gonna be really strong. You can go, you can make the shine like this. Um, if you wanted to use a 
uh, airbrush. Um, but I'm gonna go back to my watercolor stuff because that's what I'm used to. So I'm going to put some shines on the top of his head, along his scales. I like to highlight his spines, uh, so I'm gonna do that to show how beautiful and shiny they are. You can also add little dots as well to accentuate like little bits of snow or whatever, or wetness that are on his scales. Uh, they're gl glittering in the light. Um, So for his, his scales, we've established the light is coming in from this direction, approximately. It's coming down from above. So for his scales, I'm going to essentially have them shine over here. And in that case, you want to put your shading over here. It's always good to know where your light sources are when you're drawing. So um, for his scales, I'm going to put little shines on his scales on this side. shine along his back. Oops. And just little little bits of shine along his, his scales in general, um, just to show how wonderful and sparkly he is. And that is everything um, after this. Usually I would add shading before I would add highlighting, but um, you can do either. And in that case, you're finished and you have your ice wing. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it or consider subscribing. And I hope to see you next time. Darkness, something to hold on.